I have no words to describe what I'm feeling right now. Oh my gosh. Oh no. What? Hi everyone, it's me. <laughs> Today is like literally one of the most exciting days of 2023 and that is saying a lot because I got married this year. <laughs> my wedding day was obviously way more exciting than today but okay today is like second most exciting because today or tonight actually is the release of iron flame so today's video is going to be basically all about iron flame and that's probably why you clicked this video in the first place but if for some reason you have no idea what iron flame is and you just clicked onto this video because you like me iron flame is the sequel to the empyrean series the first book in the series was fourth wing hopefully that rings a bell but this series is a new adult fantasy romance series by rebecca yaros essentially to describe it it is basically divergent with spice and dragons <laughs> tonight i am going to one of the midnight release events so i will be getting my hands on a copy of the book tonight at midnight i'm sure i'm not alone here in saying that i feel like i have been waiting for this day for so long so quick rundown on my history with fourth wing so this is a fantasy book as i mentioned but rebecca yaros the author had never written fantasy before this point her previous published books were all romance books which i have read one of them absolutely love so she's always been a great author but i feel like she didn't have so much hype to her or like people didn't know her as much so when she released fourth wing in may this year 2023 i literally have no idea what happened how it blew up but yeah the book was released and at this point i was not on booktube i was not on book talk i was not on like social media book world the only connection i had to the book world was goodreads so i just started noticing this book very quickly rise up <laughs> to like number one on goodreads and i actually i saw it there for a couple of weeks but i never really like clued into what it was i was like what is this book like why is it number one i don't know at this point in my life i was reading strictly like romances and thrillers i hadn't really gone back into fantasy yet at this point so i wasn't grabbing this book on instinct so we come around to june the book has been out for like a month now okay this book is still number one on goodreads and i'm like okay you know what i'm gonna read this book <laughs> I need to know what it is about. So I went to Amazon, tried to buy it. It was not available. It was not even available for pre-order. <laughs> like I couldn't even order it. It was weird. So I checked on Indigo, which is basically like the Barnes and Noble of Canada. And I was able to actually at least put in a pre-order there. At that point, the first run editions with like those beautiful dragon stenciled edges that everyone's seen were very obviously sold out already by that point. And I guess the publisher didn't realize like how popular this book would be. So they really didn't print enough copies of this book to supply everyone who wanted this book. And I had to wait two weeks for the pre-order to come i know that doesn't even sound very long compared to other people i did hear other people saying like they had to wait literally months to get a copy of this book so i feel like two weeks i was really lucky i get the book i open it i'm like okay i'm gonna start reading what the heck is this all about and it was literally like crack and i i don't know how i got so addicted and obsessed with this book but it just had that quality to it maybe it was the nostalgia maybe it was me pining for those like divergent hunger games days where everything was simpler and more fun but yeah this book just like grabbed me and i feel like i have not cared about a book and like characters in a book this much since that era that i have been mentioning okay so iron flame gets a release date it gets an announcement and i immediately put in a pre-order because i'm like i am not missing out on the first print run on this book okay i am not making that mistake again i'm getting a copy of this book and i'm getting those black spray painted edges so i put in the pre-order and waited and waited and waited last week or maybe two weeks ago indigo our bookstore published like a story saying that they were having a midnight release event for iron flame and i <laughs> as someone who was born in the 90s like midnight release parties for books used to be such a thing like the harry potter release parties at indigo were 
like a core part of my childhood. So immediately I was like, yes, I am going to the midnight release. I have this book pre-ordered already, but I will be going to the midnight release. You can't stop me from going. So I signed up, got a ticket, whatever. So that is tonight. <laughs> I also sleep at like 9 p.m. So I'm gonna be like that grandma who is up way past her bedtime, just waiting for this book to come out. But yeah, I'll be going there tonight and taking you along with me. Also, <laughs> kind of stressed about this, but so I'm going to the midnight release with Linda and also my friend Simone and yesterday I was texting Linda and I was like, do we cancel our pre-orders? Because we both pre-ordered Iron Flame from Amazon and we we're like, do we cancel them? Because we're like literally going to a midnight release tonight and we're guaranteed a copy of the book and we were both freaking out and we're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, do we do it? And we both canceled our Amazon pre-orders yesterday and stressed because like that guaranteed me a copy of the book but I'm like logically I know that the release event tonight like guarantees me a copy of the book as well but for some reason I just don't trust it and I'm like stressing out that I don't have a copy of the book pre-ordered but yeah that is my story that is my history with fourth wing so I'm gonna get through the work day today I'm going to head downtown and we are going to get a copy of this book okay <laughs> Also, I just wanted to go over some of my fourth wing theories and things that I want to get answered in this book. I did this in my Curse for True Love reading vlog, so yeah, I'm just gonna do it again. I think it's really fun. Obviously, there's gonna be fourth wing spoilers as I'm talking about my fourth wing theories. So again, if you are watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've already read fourth wing or that you don't care about reading fourth wing and don't care about spoilers, but yeah. You've been warned, okay? There's gonna be fourth wing spoilers coming up right now. <laughs> My first theory is about Andarna. She is going to have some crazy signet. I can just feel it. You know, in the first book, she was able to give Violet the power to stop time, and she was also able to do it herself. She lost that power when she like grew up, glowed up into a full-size dragon, but there's definitely gonna be another power. Like her full grown power and I assume that Violet's also going to be able to channel that power so I don't know her original like baby power had something to do with time she was able to stop time maybe as a full grown dragon can Violet now like go back in time or like see into the future or like I don't know just something about time I have also seen on book talk that a lot of people think that Violet's gonna be able to go back in time and save Liam which I know we all would absolutely cry <laughs> with joy about but I seriously don't think that's gonna happen I think Liam is dead and I think he's gonna stay dead unfortunately as much as I want him to be alive I'm wondering if Violet's gonna be able to go back in time and just kind of more observe things rather than change things you you know like with time travel usually you can't like change that much stuff that happens it's like what will happen wants to happen and it'll happen no matter how much you interfere i feel like if violet is able to go back in time there's going to be some sort of a role like that second theory is violet is definitely going to go back to basgiath I'm probably saying that wrong, Basgiath, Basgiath, and meet Liam's sister. She's definitely gonna take her under her wing and watch over her and just make sure she falls in with the right people and gets through everything and all the challenges. Third theory is about Violet's mom. I think she knows so much. I think she knows like everything, like more than we think she knows. She likely knows everything about the rebellion. She likely knows everything that's going on with Zayden. And I honestly, I seriously can't decide if she is evil or not. Like if she is on the rebellion side or if she is on the other side. I have no idea what just fell behind me. Did you see it? Rebellion side or if she is on the... I just heard something. I don't know. I don't know if Violet's mom is going to be a supporter of the rebels or not. Next theory is, <laughs> this isn't really a theory. This is just kind of like people observing things. But a lot of people are saying Zayden is going to follow the Tamlin storyline if you guys have read Akotar. Just because there are five books in this series and the fact that Zayden and Violet have already established their relationship in the first book. Everyone's like, what are they going to do for five books? There's going to definitely be something that happens and they're going to break up and whatever. But I disagree. I think 
Dane already took that role. Like he basically almost exactly fit that Tamlin role. I think Violet and Zayden are still gonna struggle with things like, I don't know, arguments, political differences. I feel like one of them is gonna betray the other, whether on purpose or by accident. There's gonna be some struggles between the two of our main characters, but they're going to find their way back to each other or Zayden's gonna die, which is one of my other theories. <laughs> this is exactly my next theory. I think one of Violet's dragons is definitely gonna die. <laughs> Whether it happens in Iron Flame or later in the series, one of her dragons is gonna die. It has to happen. I feel like there would be no other point of giving her two dragons other than, yeah, for the sole reason that if one of her dragons dies, Violet can still stay alive because she still has a dragon. Am I absolutely depressed about it? Yes, but I just think it's gonna happen. I don't know if it'll be Andarna or Tairn, but one of them is gonna die. I don't want it to be Andarna because I love her and she's so cute and small and pure, but I also don't want it to be Tairn because then it also affects Sigale and then obviously Zayden, which I don't know. I feel like it might happen. I feel like Rebecca might do this to us. She is not a happily ever after sort of a writer, so I think think something's gonna happen. Taren is going to sacrifice himself. It's gonna lead to the line of like Sigale and Zayden also dying and I think they're all gonna be in on it and they're all gonna do it for the greater good. <sighs> Makes me so sad to think about but I think it's gonna happen. And then Violet's gonna be left with Andarna. Is it gonna happen in this book? Probably not. It's probably gonna happen later, maybe even near the end of the series. Okay, this isn't like a fully formed theory but it's just a part in fourth wing that I still can't stop thinking about. You know when they win the squad games or whatever it was called and then Violet's entire squad goes out to the outpost where she sees Mira. In this group, like when they were flying there, Imogen was like very clearly mentioned that like she was there. She had some lines, she said some things, she was part of the group. She flew to this outpost, okay? But then the next day when their squad split up into the two groups where like one did the patrols and then one did like kind of like their own battle brief, Imogen was not mentioned in either group. Like Rebecca Yaros clearly stated like every single person's name who was in every group and how they were divided. and. Imogen was not included and that just leaves me to think where the heck did she go? Also, did she just wipe everyone's memories so everyone forgot that she was there because obviously this book is from Violet's perspective so it's like did Violet just forget that Imogen was there because Imogen took that memory away because we all know that Imogen's signet is wiping recent memories. I don't know where this half-formed theory leads to but you gotta admit that's a little sus. <laughs> okay I have two more theories left so just bear with me. Speaking of Mira I think she's going to do something very bad. I think her and Violet are going to be on opposite sides. I don't know I just don't see Mira supporting the rebellion, I just get kind of an iffy feeling about her. And then my last theory is that I think there's something else going on with the rebellion kids with their second markings. What were they called again? Like the, the tattoos <laughs> that the dragons give them. I know that those markings also allow them to be like together in larger groups and then General Melgrin can't see them if they're larger than groups of three. I think they also might have given them second signets. We all know for example that Zayden is a shadow wielder but it seems like he can also read minds and not only only Violet's mind, like he can maybe read other people's minds, kind of like an intrinsic. He just secretly has this second power that he's told no one because it's very dangerous and not allowed. There are just also other things pointing to this, like Imogen's signet, as I mentioned, is wiping recent memories, but she can also like move super fast. Liam also, like his signet was sensing things, like seeing things and hearing things very far away. There was also something that happened, I think, in that final battle in Fourth Wing where he wielded ice. I'm gonna have to reread it because maybe it was another rider nearby that like shot the ice out, but I'm pretty sure it was Liam. So it's like, do you also have ice power? I don't know, something to think about. Out, but those are all of my theories. Tonight we shall go to our super fun book event. <laughs> so I'll see you later. How do they do that? <laughs> First fights are good. Very good. Yeah, very good. Thanks. Oh my god, we're going in, we're going in, we're going in. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, 
Jamie chilling on the ground by herself with her dragons. <laughs> He's fierce. <laughs> I'm sleeping. <laughs> and proud. <laughs> Woo, looks good. <laughs> oh my gosh you guys i just got home i'm sorry if you hear some crunching in the background i just put out some food for my cats so they are just snacking what time is it it is 12 53 a.m right now this is the latest i have stayed up since i don't know when it's been so long we also just had like daylight time daylight why can't i say it i'm so tired i can't even talk we also just had daylight savings time change. Why does that sound so weird? We moved our clocks backwards yesterday, so it just feels like technically it's kind of like 1.53 right now instead of 12.53, so it's like so late. But I have secured the goods. Look at this really cute bag as well. I am not even going to take the book out of this bag right now because I know if I take the book out, if I start reading one page, even if I'm like, I just want to read one page, I'm not gonna be able to put it down. And I'm so tired right now that I just I feel like I need to go to sleep and then wake up fresh in the morning and then start reading on a fresh awake mind so I'm just gonna get ready for bed I'm gonna sleep and then I'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs> friends I had a great <laughs> night rest I'm refreshed I'm ready to go I'm so excited for today I am going to read <laughs> yesterday was so fun dinner was so good it blew my mind and then for the midnight book release event <laughs> it was interesting I haven't gone to one of these midnight book release events since the old Harry Potter days and I feel like the Harry Potter events were just like a lot more involved like there was more stuff going on I remember like wand making they had like a reptile person with snakes and stuff they had like animals at the harry potter one i think they did an okay job with the iron flame release party but i feel like they could have done just a little bit more but that's okay it was still really fun definitely past my bedtime though so i was so 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 tired by the end of the night we were all kind of just delusional because linda simone and i are all just grandmas at this point so yeah we were all just a little loopy by the end of the night but we got our dragon tattoos <laughs> and yeah there was like trivia and stuff it was really funny actually i surprised myself i'm kind of like very impressed with my memory right now because there was one trivia question it was like the last one so it was the hardest question and the question was how many people died on the parapet in a fourth wing and i for some reason the number 67 just popped up in my head i feel like that is such a random fact that like i usually would not care to remember but the number 67 just popped into my head so it was like 67 and that was the actual answer my mind was blown <laughs> everyone was like what the heck like how did you just remember that randomly anyways i have my goodies so they had these like little swag bag things there was nothing in them they were empty but it's kind of the perfect like book size bag and the goods are inside in it too here is my copy it is thicker than a fourth wing so it's definitely longer i can't believe it's real i can't believe it's like in my hands here is the map Ooh. i still have to study that and see if there are any new place oh yeah there are a lot more outposts labeled here so i'm guessing we go out into the world quite a bit here i also just because i can't control myself i bought a copy of hurricane wars i have been eyeing this book for a while i've been seeing it everywhere on social media i have no self-control when it comes to books and just grabbed a copy as i passed it <laughs> but okay oh my gosh let's start reading <laughs>
I just finished the first chapter. Kind of going through it slow so far. We do start this book right where Fourth Wing ended up. But yeah, in this first chapter, we are already meeting quite a few new people. So yeah, I'm just taking my time to make sure I like remember all their names and remember who they all actually are because I feel like it's a lot of new characters to take in in one chapter. But yeah, it's good so far. I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna keep reading. Pencil dry. Hey guys, so just another little update. I am on page 152. I've been reading it pretty slowly just because I don't want to miss any details. Nothing too dramatic has happened other than like kind of finding out what happened to Andarna and like what she is like now. But yeah, as I said, we've just been being introduced to like so many new characters in this book that I'm just like going slowly because I have to like make an effort to remember who's who. We are getting some good moments with our existing characters that we already know and love. But yeah, I just for some reason I didn't expect to have to like meet new people in this book. <laughs> I did in the meantime just receive a package from Amazon and I know what this is. It's also fourth wing related. If you guys have been on any form of like fourth wing social media, especially TikTok, you probably heard of that untitled Red Tower release <laughs> where like Amazon, all these bookstores posted like this very mysterious listing and the listing was just called Untitled Red Tower Release 2023. Everyone was like, what is this? It had the same release date as Iron Flame. It was November 7th, so we're all like, is this fourth wing related? Because it was from the same publisher. The untitled release did eventually get announced that it was a holiday version of fourth wing, so I got one. <laughs> oh, there's a sticker on it though. I hope I can take it off. A new fun cover. It's got black sprayed edges, but without the dragons, which is sad. Oh my gosh, this is cool. It's got a different like end paper, and apparently there are two bonus chapters in this edition from Zayden's POV. <gasps> We do! We have Zayden's POV chapters, so we have chapter 9. Oh, this is when they were like on the mat together and he was like teaching her a lesson. Chapter 16 is the second Zayden chapter. Oh, this is just after threshing. So that's fun. I might take a little mini break from reading Iron Flame and just read these two bonus chapters and then I'll get back to it. having some lunch. It doesn't look very appetizing. It's not the most aesthetic thing in the world, but it tastes so good. I had some leftover mushroom kale soup, and then I just like cooked pasta into it, so it kind of became like a very saucy mushroom pasta. Mmm, that's so good. I did read the two fourth wing bonus chapters. They were fun. I feel like they didn't really offer too much in terms of important information, but they were definitely just like fun to read. It was a good time just seeing like what Zayden was thinking during those moments with Violet. It was probably all stuff we like knew about already inside, you know, but it was just officially put on paper. But yeah, like nothing crazy happened in those bonus chapters. And I'm gonna keep reading. So I'm back on the couch. I'm on page 239. I have no words to describe what I'm feeling right now. Actually, maybe I do have words. Anger, shock, fear, frustration. Why? No. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I'm on page 334. I've reached this point. I'm not gonna show you the words, but I have reached this point of the book where we are at part two officially. Oh my gosh. Stuff is happening. We're definitely at a very like climactic part in the book and we have half the book left to go. So I'm kind of scared of like what else could possibly happen here because I feel like I have read enough to like fulfill a whole book. Like I just need things to wrap up because I'm so stressed, but I'm really enjoying this experience. <laughs> Without saying too much, there are definitely characters that I have changed my mind about. There are characters that I am very confused about. And yeah, I am just like fully invested in this story again. I feel like at the beginning of the book, as I mentioned, we did meet quite a few new characters and I was kind of like, mm, I don't want to learn about these new people. I just want to like hang out with all my old friends that we met in fourth wing. Hi Sage. Sage is hungry. But now I am just 
loving everything. I'm sucking it all up. I am like fully immersed back into this world. I'm gonna get ready for bed. I'm probably gonna read a bit more in bed as well, and then we will continue reading tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. We <laughs> left off. <sighs> okay, what am I trying to say? This is how far into the book now I have read this much. I have this much left to go. I'm at around page 400, just past the 400 mark. I don't know how I slept, but I was reading in bed. I got to this like really, really dramatic point. You know, like when a chapter ends, but it's like one of those dramatic chapter ends. That's kind of a cliffhanger. I ended reading last night on one of those chapters and I was just, I was feeling tired and I had already promised myself like, okay, I'm going to get to the end of this chapter and then I'm going to go to sleep. So I had to, you know, follow my own word and, and listen to myself. So I stopped reading. I didn't think I'd be able to sleep because I, was like freaking out inside but I somehow managed to sleep how much left do I I probably have like 200 pages left maybe like 250 I don't know, I'm just guesstimating. I don't even want to check how many pages are in this book because I know Fourth Wing ended on such a cliffhanger that I don't want to like flip to the last page just to check the page number and see something I don't want to see. So I'm not even going there. Yeah, I'm going to keep reading today. Things are going nuts in this book. I am at the point now where I'm like, I don't understand how the series can be a five book series because I feel like so much has happened already. I feel like things are on the verge of concluding. Like I can see things happening and plot points potentially wrapping up but maybe they won't like maybe something else big will get thrown into the mix but yeah at this point i'm like what more can happen to these characters and what the heck does rebecca yaros have in store in her mind to be able to write the next three books because i know she's kind of like rough drafted them in her head like the plot points for all five books i have no idea what's gonna happen and i'm just gonna keep reading i do have many 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 thoughts i'm gonna keep reading today okay <laughs> I'm on page 497. I'm about to say something a little bit spoilery, so please skip to this time code if you haven't read this book yet. I'm gonna give you three seconds. Okay, and Darna's gonna be a silver dragon, isn't she? She's not gonna be fully black. She's gonna be like silver or like sparkly or like something different, right? Like there's no way she's just a normal black dragon. They keep mentioning her looking different than Taryn. What are my feelings right now? I hate Kat. Kat can literally die. I'm kind of uncomfortable with this Dane redemption arc thing, but I actually don't hate it. I'm always one to believe in second chances, and you know what? He kind of explained himself. Is it completely excusable what he did? No, but he kind of talked himself out of it a little tiny bit, so not hating the redemption arc as much as I thought I would. I am absolutely terrified for Zayden and Violet's lives by the end of the fifth book. I have such a bad feeling about what they're gonna have to do and the sacrifices they're gonna have to make. I don't know. I... Clues are pointing all in the wrong direction, okay? Love the entire squad. I love Rhiannon, obviously. I love Sawyer, Riddock. I love Imogen so much. There's some things that are stressing me out. There were like some excerpts. You know how they do like these quotes at the tops of the chapters. There are a couple of them that were like collected letters from the letters that Zayden was writing Violet while he was away. And instead of just calling them like letters from Violet to Zayden, it said recovered correspondence from Violet to Zayden, which makes me think that they're not alive, right? Like that just, and it said cadet Violet Soringale, which means she never graduates, which might make sense because she like, you know, they all left Basgath, so none of them will technically graduate officially anymore, unless the classes and the schooling at Arisha count as like real school. I also have no idea if I'm saying any of these words or names right, so <laughs> bear with me. But yeah, I just have a very, very terrible feeling that Violet's going to die, and so will Zayden. Like if this book was written in the future and transcribed by Jasenia, why does it say Cadet Violet Swarengale? Like, did she never get past the cadet 
stage or is it cadet because the letters were written at the time while she was a cadet i'm gonna hope that's the case okay but there are so many signs pointing to the fact that violet and zayden are going to have to sacrifice themselves for some whatever reason and i don't like it and i'm stressed but like i love it at the same time but yeah i'm gonna keep reading maybe i'll finish it today i don't know i have to go out to an event this evening so i won't have as much time to read so we'll see how much i get to okay <laughs> I feel like we're about to uncover something really crazy about Zayden, so I just started recording. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm still sitting here reading. I have 10 pages left. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> There is absolutely no way Rebecca Yaros just did that to us. There's no way. There's, uh, no. <laughs> I'm actually so stressed right now. Like, I need that third book. <laughs> I knew that we were probably going to end on some sort of crazy cliffhanger because Fourth Wing did. <sighs> I can very honestly say I did not see that coming. The fourth wing cliffhanger, I saw coming, but this one, I didn't see coming until maybe like a couple pages before it happened. I was reading and I was thinking like, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And then it happened. That was an experience. I, <laughs> what do I think about this book? I can't even like, my thoughts are like, chaotic right now but thoroughly enjoyed this book i thought it was a great second book to the series definitely had that highly addictive fast paced style of writing that rebecca yaros is so good at i will say though the beginning was a little slow and hard to get into i mentioned this already earlier in the video but i think it's because we were introduced to so many new characters like all of a sudden and i was just like i don't care about these new people i want to know what happened to all the people that i already know and love we just got all this information and all these new names like really quickly at the beginning and some of them played an important role later in the book but some of them I feel like didn't so for me I'm just like why did I have to learn all of those names and try and memorize them and remember them and who they are to only have some of them take a larger role later on in the book but maybe the others will take a role like in the next three books who knows but yeah I will say the beginning was a little slower to get into but then once we got into it whew, that was a journey, okay? <laughs> what else can I say that's not like spoilery? The magic system really gets expanded in this book. We learn a lot more about the magic system and how it's wielded and where it comes from, etc. So I found that really interesting. The politics obviously get a little more insane in this book. That usually happens with sequels in fantasy series. It's funny because I was reading this book and I like by the three quarter mark was like, how is this going to be a five series? book because I feel like things are on the verge of concluding like I can taste everything wrapping up but then obviously Rebecca found a way to just you know trigger all these other new problems and I can see why we need to have more books now because things are not okay <laughs> okay we're going into the spoilery section of my thoughts now so please skip to this time code if you do not want to hear them oh what is my first thought i kind of wrote notes a little bit while i was reading but not too many zayden and violet were really annoying in this book in terms of their relationship together i'm like just be fully honest with each other like you're both fighting it like just embrace that you both love each other and stop being silly i found that part kind of annoying that it took so much of the book to just like get there and I feel like they're still not fully there I mean now they, they definitely have a lot of issues uh, still love them together still want them to be endgame I'm really worried for them now I just yeah found them really annoying like just talk to each other and, and tell each other all your secrets <laughs> the friendships all the squad bonding in this book was so good like I loved it I love the squad I love everyone in the squad just 
beautiful, it made me cry. The Dane Redemption arc, I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't looked at social media whatsoever, so I don't know how everyone else is reacting to it yet, but at this point, just me and my own opinion, I don't hate his redemption arc. Do I like him as a person, and is he like my favorite person in the world in the book? Absolutely not. I'm still like icky with him, but I do appreciate his redemption arc and I think it's fair. <laughs> and then their mom. She like also kind of had a redemption for me in this book. Like obviously she was still, you know, iffy on the politics, maybe on the wrong side of things, but she just really did care for her children just in the wrong way. But uh, I grew a soft spot for her a little bit. Like she was just trying to be a mother and not everyone can be a good mother just naturally and she wasn't but i cried i cried i cried that's <sighs> anyways this has been a very interesting reading experience i am just going to uh, sit in my feelings i have an event to go to this evening so i'm gonna i don't know how i'm gonna like manage emotions while i'm like at an event with people i don't know but that's my journey with iron flame when does the third book come out rebecca <laughs> I need it right now. Those are my thoughts. I'll probably have some more put together thoughts in my monthly reading wrap up video. I'll probably talk about this a bit more with a more straight on head, but that's my reading experience. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I definitely enjoyed reading. <laughs> but yeah, if you did enjoy it, please leave me a like and a comment. If you don't know what to comment down below, let me know what you thought about Iron Flame, but just make sure if you're including spoilers in your comment, put like spoilers dot 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 and like so your spoilers are hidden in the expanding thing in the comments you know what i mean and if you haven't read iron flame just let me know what you're currently reading right now if you like me subscribe do that bell thing and i will see you in the next one <laughs> bye